welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so uh, I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size being six three six four to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing and science, to the arts, all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. The athletes has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've, I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rath's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses the long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. In four years, this, this could be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. 
Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency. choose Kelly Chevrolet. We offer a wide selection of new and used inventory with a team that guides you to your perfect fit. Our certified pre-owned options ensure peace of mind with warranties and rigorous inspections. Competitive pricing, flexible financing, and convenient trade and services making your dream Chevrolet a reality. Trust our experienced service team to keep your vehicle in top shape and enjoy free car washes as long as you own your vehicle. Good evening, everybody. We welcome you back to Wayne High School. The girls' game is in the books, and it's just about time for boys' basketball between the Wayne Generals and the Northrop Bruins here on SummitCitySports.com. I'm Thad Goff. Matt Jackson is running camera for us tonight, and we are pleased to bring you this broadcast as always. Well, Wayne currently sits at first place in the SAC. They're a half game ahead of Bishop Lewers. Generals have an overall conference record of four, or excuse me, they have an overall record of 10 and 3. They have a conference record of 4 and 0. Lures, who I just mentioned, is 3 and 0. And some other key games going on in the SAC tonight. Homestead is on the road taking on Northside, and Homestead is 3 and 1 in conference play. Northside's 2 and 1 in conference play. So one of those teams could gain some significant ground in the SAC race. As we got about 3 minutes to go before this game gets underway. Well, Javon Lewis is the leading scorer for Wayne coming into this game. He averages 20 points per game. Also, you got H.J. Dillard averaging 13.4 points per game. Those two are starting tonight. However, the Generals are without some key pieces tonight. Chase Barnes will not be playing. He is basically day-to-day -day with an injury. Head coach Anthony Brewer said before the game that he's hoping to get Barnes back any day now. So basically... Might as well say that Barnes is day-to-day -day with the injury that he's dealing with. Kalen Williams-Thomas is in a boot tonight, so he's not going to be able to play either. Well, they'll play the fight songs here at Wayne High School. Meanwhile, we'll update you on this Northrop team. Northrop is under new leadership. In fact, both teams are under new leadership. Shane Merriman takes over as Northrop's head coach this year. They are 0-9 so far this season. Shane Merriman does have some pretty good experience. He's coached under some pretty respectable coaches in the area. Coached under Rod Chamble at Northrop the last couple of years and coached under Marty Beasley at Carroll before coming over to Northrop. It's kind of been a, a Carroll-Northrop transition, if you will. And I think that kind of started with uh, Katie Jackson taking over as head coach. Her son Jalen transferred from Carroll to Northrop. And her daughters, Sanaya and Nevaeh, also transferred. And now Shane Merriman has uh, made the transition from Carroll over to Northrop as well. He's a Huntington University graduate. He was one of those uh, stretch four type of players, if you will. He could, uh, he's a big man who could also jump, step out and shoot the three and do it very effectively. Unfortunately for Shane Merriman, he's not going to be shooting any threes in the game tonight as Northrop takes the court looking for their first win. And if they get it tonight, they get it in perhaps the most hostile environment in SAC boys basketball. Dallas Lawrence leads the Bruins in scoring this year. He's averaging 10.6 points per game on the season. Not far behind him is Makai Davis, the senior guard, 5'9 guard. He's averaging 7.4. The junior Jackson Hughes averages 7.3 per game. And the sophomore Don LaRay Reese averages 7.3 points per game on the season. It's a little update on what has taken place for both the Generals and the Bruins so far this year. We're back in a couple moments as we get you ready for the start of this game between the Generals and the Bruins. You're watching High School Basketball on SubCitySports.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. 
Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Why choose Kelly Chevrolet? We offer a wide selection of new and used inventory with a team that guides you to your perfect fit. Our certified pre-owned options ensure peace of mind with warranties and rigorous inspections. Competitive pricing, flexible financing, and convenient trade and services making your dream Chevrolet a reality. Trust our experienced service team to keep your vehicle in top shape and enjoy free car washes as long as you own your vehicle. Well, we just had the national anthem here at Wayne High School. Having it with another 2.45 left on the clock. While we've got a moment, we're going to go ahead and get a word in from some of our sponsors that allow us to call all these games that we get to broadcast right here on SummitCitySports.com. Today's broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Big Odd Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook page for updated promotions and enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at Big Eyed Fish. New state-of-the-art car wash facilities. Free car washes are available when you buy from, Dr from Kelly Automotive Group. Shop online at drivekelly.com. At Ottenweller Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind during the entire process from bid to build. Visit OttenwellerContracting.com to learn more. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area from ages 5 to 18. Jump on board. Together we can reach the summit. Tom Steele Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They'll help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning is dedicated to providing the best possible solution for your home or business. Visit AndersonCoolHeat.com. Ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you? Whether it's expunging your criminal record or helping you to get your driver's license reinstated. If so, then Jolly Law Firm is your answer. Sioka Cleaning and Restoration providing commercial cleaning services, including janitorial, water damage, and state-of-the-art disinfecting services throughout Northeast Indiana. Well, we're going to come back in a matter of moments. You're watching High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com.
framework of good sportsmanship. Remember, sportsmanship is an expectation. So please let the players play, let the coaches coach, let the officials officiate, and let the fans just spectate. Your cooperation is appreciated. A message from Wayne High School. At this time, let's meet tonight's starting lineups. Starting with the Bruins of Northbrook High School. Well, how do you like that introduction for Preston Comer? I'm pretty sure the uh, PA announcer here just called him cool as milk. <laughs> That's one I haven't heard before. <laughs> but the Wayne, Ge Wayne General's taking on the Northrop Bruins here tonight, and a little word about Preston Comer. Last year in my communications with, head, with then head coach Byron Pickens, last year was Comer's first year of school ball, but Comer played extremely well in a lot of those games. You might say he was taking guys to school. It's going to be H.J. Dillard to tip it off for the Generals. He's going to be tipping off against number four, Dallas Lawrence, the six-foot-four small forward type of player, you might say. He is listed as a forward. Dillard does have a little bit of a size advantage, more of a two-inch advantage. It looks like more when you see him face-to-face, -face, but Dillard has just two inches on Lawrence, and two inches apparently was enough for Dillard to win that tip. Oh, that's a deep three. Lewis off the mark. Comer hustling after it. He's got the offensive board. Lewis leads the Generals in scoring. He's averaging 20 points per game on the season. Quaylen Miles getting the start tonight in the place of Chase Barnes as Dillard rises up for the early jumper, and Wayne has a 2-0 lead. Here's Ahmad Salam, a junior who started a lot last year for Northrop as a sophomore. Starting this year for young head coach Shane Merriman as that ball's kicked out of bounds. Merriman, his first year as Northrop head coach, he's a Huntington University graduate. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, he's a 2015 Huntington graduate. Inbound goes to Makai Davis. Hughes against the double team. He finds Davis, and Davis's three won't fall, but Hughes has the board for the Bruins. Off the hands of Lawrence, and a long possession here for the Bruins, and they get the three ball. Don LaRay Reese from downtown, and Northrop takes an early lead. Step back jumper, Javon Lewis in and out. Battle for the board. It's won by the Generals and out to Lewis. Quaylen Miles for three. He's got it. Quaylen Miles answers to get the Generals on top by two.
Salam trying to get by Miles. Lewis came out a little help side D there. Davis has it for Northrop. Reese fakes. Back out to Hughes. Hughes zips it inside to Dallas Lawrence. He fakes Terry into the air, and Lawrence gets that one to go. Dallas Lawrence ties the game. Bruins looking for their first win of the season, but Lewis drives to the basket, gets past the entire defense, and gives Wayne the lead. Well, you lose Lewis. He can make bad things happen to opposing teams, make good things happen if you're a Generals fan. And a foul is called. That's going to be on the Bruins. Dallas Lawrence is called for the foul. And that's the first team foul this game against Northrop. First team foul against either team. Got 541 and counting to play as Lewis running the point here for Wayne. That was kind of a slow stroll across the timeline. Dillard's got it. Double teamed. He gets to the bucket. Off the mark. Miles lost it, and the Bruins come away with it. That looked like Davis going to the deck to grab that loose ball, and now that's a takeaway. Quaylen Miles all alone flips it in. Quaylen Miles turning defense into offense. Salam double teamed. He dishes to Reese, and Reese's three won't fall. Wayne has scored in transition the last couple times down. That's another deep three by Lewis, and this time he hits it. Very close to the volleyball line was Javon Lewis. Bruins take a timeout, and while they do so, we will show you that last triple. That was very near the volleyball line. Lewis has tried two deep threes in this one, and in this time he was successful. That's NBA range right there. Lewis making it happen for the Generals and giving them a seven-point lead. They're on a 7-0 run. Now that run started, thanks in large part to Lewis, right after a made basket by the Bruins. Lewis was the only man to touch the ball on this possession, put on the little spin cycle there to get past Don LeRae Reese. That's what gave Wayne the lead, and now that lead has ballooned out to seven. Timeout, I believe, was taken by Northrop, so we'll go ahead and reflect that. Meanwhile, Homestead's got a 14-8 lead over Northside. That's one of the games we got going on here on SummitCitySports.com. Carroll and Southside also taking the court tonight, and Southside is leading in that one, 31-23 over there at Don Riker Gymnasium. to go in the first quarter here at Wayne High School. Northrop is back in action tomorrow night as they take on Central Noble. That's actually a 2.30 start. Contested shot. Comer blocked it. Davis stayed with it, and he gets fouled. They got the foul on Quaylen Miles. That's going to be Quaylen's first foul as he's got a shoelace loose. Davis knocks down the first of two free throws. He'll get one more. Looks like Miles has the shoes tied. Davis goes two for two. Generals go quick. Comer cuts. Lewis going to fire another deep one. That's good. Lewis, two for three from beyond the arc. And it's an eight-point general lead. Eight points total for Lewis as Davis avoids the turnover that time. Lawrence trying to do the same. They just get it into Salam, and he puts it home. Salam in a tight window. They somehow got it to him. Well, Northrop keeping it close so far as Dillard traveled. Well, you can see that from a mile away. Yeah. 
Concordia at Snyder is also going on. Looks like that game has not yet started, but they're getting close to start time over there at Kilmer Court. Meanwhile, Wayne with a six-point lead over Northrop. Bruins looking for their first win of the season. Lawrence drives. Dillard cuts him off. Step back jumper, and that might have been blocked. I think that was Dillard who got out to contest it. Lewis was thinking about another three. And he's going to fire one over Reese. That one won't go. Battle for the board, and Northrop gets it. It's Davis who comes out of the pack with it. Lawrence looking for a crease to the basket. No good. And that's off of Comer. Lawrence continued to battle for it along that baseline and actually knocked it off of Comer's hands. So an extra possession for Northrop as they get it into Lawrence. Purnell Whitset with the feed over to James Browning. Imagine Whitset will be taking the field during baseball season, which is not too far away. Lawrence a little long on the jumper. Comer comes out with the board. Well, Comer is a big man. He can run the floor, though. Dillard working the baseline. He's basically the primary big man in the Wayne offense here is Carrington Terry. Apologize, got a little tongue-tied there, but Carrington Terry gets the bucket and stretches out the Wayne lead. It's man-to-man -man defense here by the Generals as Comer sticks with James Browning. Davis. Feeds that one to Reese. Oh, Lewis was coming behind him. He was trying to pick his pocket. Recovered by Davis. He's got the much bigger H.J. Dillard on him. They somehow get that to Whitsett. Blocked from behind by Lewis. Terry recovers it on the baseline. And the Generals keep possession. Comer's three comes up short, and Whitsett is there for the board. Reese slows it down. He fires across the court. Little shot fake. It's blocked. Preston Comer. And I believe that's his second block of the game. Quick down the floor. Lewis. Comer blocks it. Lewis scores it. Little one-two punch there from the Generals. That pass goes long and out of bounds. A little full court pressure by Wayne, and they force a Northrop turnover. With that bucket by Lewis, he's up to 10 points for the game. Keyshawn Tolles has entered the game for Wayne. He wears number zero. I believe he's the younger brother of Cameron Tolles, who played both football and basketball here at Wayne High School. Lewis the drive through traffic, blocked and ripped away. Purnell Whitsett, catch and shoot. Don LaRay hits a three. Don LaRay Reese. Trying to keep Northrop in this one, his second three of the game. Miles was thinking about it. He got Dillard at the top of the key there. They get it to him against the zone defense and it's knocked away. And off the hands of Davis, and that's going to be Wayne basketball. Bruins have been going zone these last couple possessions and able to get some turnovers, especially on that last possession. But Wayne takes over, leading by seven with 102 to go here in the first quarter. Meanwhile, Homestead's got a 17 to eight lead over Northside. Baseline drive, Terry, he finds Dillard. Miles from the free throw line, soft touch, but it won't fall. Reese has it stolen down the floor by Miles. Miles through traffic, finds Dillard. Dillard up with it. He was in perfect position. H.J. Dillard, four points so far as Northrop can hold for the final shot here, down to 27 seconds as Makai Davis draws a foul. It was on the Generals as their second team foul. H.J. Dillard called for it, and Dallas Lawrence will come back into the game. Anthony Brewer, meanwhile, having a little conversation with one of the officials. 
Not sure if it had to do with the foul or what it has to do with. But Northrop keeps possession with 26.9 to go here in the first. Inbound goes to Jackson Hughes. Northrop may play for the final shot, or will they? The three comes up short, and Dillard collects it. And he was in perfect position for that one as well. Tolls will feed that one back over to Lewis. And an offensive foul on the screen. Keyshawn Tolls tagged with it. And as Wayne was looking to close out the quarter with a bucket, Anthony Brewer not happy with the call as Hughes fires a three. It's off the glass, and that's going to end the first quarter. Try as he might, Tolls could not hit that desperation three, but not a lot of desperation for Wayne. They're up 21 to 12 over Northrop, and we'll be right back for the start of the second quarter here on SummitCitySports.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Why choose Kelly Chevrolet? We offer a wide selection of new and used inventory with a team that guides you to your perfect fit. Our certified pre-owned options ensure peace of mind with warranties and rigorous inspections. Competitive pricing, flexible financing, and convenient trade and services making your dream Chevrolet a reality. Trust our experienced service team to keep your vehicle in top shape and enjoy free car washes as long as you own your vehicle. 21 to 12 in favor of the Wayne Generals. Closer than you might expect, Wayne currently is the top team in the Summit Athletic Conference. They are 4-0 in conference play. Northrop, meanwhile, still looking for their first win of the season. As Davis brings it back, gets the screen from Hughes. That's poked away and stolen, but stolen right back. Makai Davis sticking with it the whole way. Couldn't get it to go, though, over Dillard. Miles, the lob down the floor to Lewis. Lewis going to use the baseline. Goes for the reverse, and that won't go. Lewis falls down afterwards. He's back on his feet as Salam races through some traffic, and he's fouled from behind by Quaylen Miles. For Miles, it's his second foul of the game. And Salam goes to the line to shoot two. Preston Comer back into the ball game to take the place of Miles. Second one's good. Salam goes one for two on that trip. Through traffic and turning it over there is LaShawn Green. Hughes had it swatted from behind. It is off of the Generals. Bruins keep possession. Boy, that was awful close. I thought that was going to be called a foul. They say the, there was no foul there on Dillard, and it's going to be Northrop Ball. Ahmad Salam will look to put it in play, and we'll see if Wayne sticks with a 2-3 zone. That appears to be the look right now, and now they're going to go with the man-to-man. -man. Lawrence drives, had it poked away, out of bounds. It'll stay with Northrop. I think that was Comer who came and knocked the ball away. Comer's been active on the defensive side. That's not bad for someone who didn't play school ball until his sophomore year. Three ball is good. Don LaRay Reese. That's his third triple of the game. And Northrop gets the first points of this second quarter. Comer lobs it out. That's another deep three. Javon Lewis comes up short this time. And, well, Northrop probably okay with letting him make his living way out there. 
Obviously, we know he can shoot the three, and we know he can hit from deep, but Northrop probably thinking, okay, if we can let him fire those deep threes all night long, we might be able to get some stops. You can't make your living shooting threes from the volleyball line. Dallas Lawrence has it go off his hand. He does recover, drives inside, and could not put it home, but an offensive board, Whitsett has it blocked. Lewis just on the outer edge of the paint. That's short. Tip back up. It won't go. Back out to Tolls, and Comer finally able to finish. And then a timeout has been taken. See who called it. It was Northrop who called it. I believe they've got three timeouts left. Well, will they take a timeout? We'll also take a timeout here on SummonCitySports.com. update for you. Concordia and Snyder a pretty close game over at Kilmer Court. Snyder leads that one 12 to 9. Here at Wayne, it is the Generals leading by 7, but they've been outscored here in the second quarter, 3 to 2 so far. Northam used a lot of zone defense here in the second quarter. Has not made things easy for the Generals when they've been on offense. A little pick and roll action. Lawrence recovers and right at the backboard he scores. Lewis driving through traffic, gets right to the backboard and scores. And a whistle blow after the make. And I'm not sure what that was. Lewis, a little discussion with the officials there. It looks like the basket's going to count. Still showing on the scoreboard here at Wayne High School. I think they had a foul. Shortly before the inbound, Quaylen Miles got called for it. That'd be his second. Driving through traffic is Davis, and he draws a foul. That's going to be on LaShawn Green. Anthony Brewer just said, why do we have trouble picking up people? It's dribble penetration making it difficult on the Wayne Generals. They are having trouble picking guys up, and that's one reason for the foul there. It was on LaShawn Green. Davis will hand that one off to Mersin Mingashunga. I hope I pronounced that right as Lawrence spots up and hits a three. Dallas Lawrence helping to keep the Bruins in this one as they seek their first victory of the year. And a timeout called by Wayne. It is a full timeout, and Anthony Brewer is not happy about the defensive effort his team has given the last couple possessions. We'll look at this last possession on our Traction AP replay. It was set up by the dribble drive and the foul committed by Wayne. And it was capped off by Dallas Lawrence knocking off a three ball. You'll see it right here. They're trying to run with him, and Lawrence proved to be too quick. He was able to get away from Carrington Terry. Right now, Northrop. Here in the second quarter, I believe has outscored the Bruins 10 to 4. Outscored the Generals 10 to 4, I beg your pardon. Generals still have the lead, but Northrop has the momentum right now. Gotta get some updates for you while we can on some other games going on. Cordia and Snyder was the most recent one we had. It looks like that one's at break right now. But Northrop finding a little momentum, and right now, Javon Lewis 
Has his hands up. Has a little discussion going on with the officials. Mitchell went over to say something to Anthony Brewer. That ball's almost stolen away. Three ball comes up short, taken by Tyree Eldridge. The Generals save it. Lewis commits the offensive foul. Out of control there as he tried to drive through traffic and he knocked down Salam. Lewis commits his first, and Salam trying to drive against Terry. Salam goes baseline. Very little room, but somehow avoided stepping out. Reese brings it outside, guarded by Comer. Check that, he's guarded by Eldridge. Loose ball again, Lawrence recovers. Nearly poked away, but somehow grabbed by Davis. Salam drives, goes for the turnaround jumper and hits! And Northrop is within two. Northrop trying to get their first win of the season against the first place team in the SAC. Foul is called. The basket's going to count. Going to call the foul on Jackson Hughes as H.J. Dillard gets the bucket, and he's going to the line. And Dillard doesn't have that one go over the backboard quite yet. It does drop in. And he completes the three-point play, 28-23. to The crossover dribble there by Davis. Reese has hit three threes in the ball game for Northrop. So he tries to help will this team back into it. They've gotten back into it, cut it down as close as two. Northrop actually did have a two-point lead early on in the ball game. They've actually led twice. Hughes into the paint, feeds into the last minute. Boy, the ball movement by Northam has been really good, but unfortunately it's negated by the travel there by Salam as he took the ball with him to the deck. Well, the cheerleaders are saying, you stepped, you stepped, you took some baby steps. It wasn't quite that. It was more like he went to the deck with the basketball in his possession. That's good in football, but not in basketball. Lewis to his right, through the paint, the floater. Got it. Just got it to drop. Lewis trying to get momentum back on his team's side. He's got 14 points to lead all Wayne scorers. Salam uses the screen. Oh, boy. Did he keep the pivot foot down? The officials say yes, and the possession goes on. Reese trying to get around Eldridge. Lawrence contested three. He's short on that one. Boy, Comer was face up with him. That was good defense on his part. I think that's what Anthony Brewer wanted more of. Does he want more of this? Well, not with those kind of results, I wouldn't think. General's still batting for it, but so are the Bruins. But Dillard gets it. Did he travel? He did. He came down with the basketball, and the Bruins take over. Purnell Whitsett comes into the game. Northrop, under a first-year head coach, Shane Merriman, looking for their first win of the season. It'd be a huge upset if they can get it. 2.17 to go. Salam feeds that one over to Davis. Hughes picked up by Dillard. Whitsett went right through the legs of Terry. I'm not sure Terry saw that ball as it came through. Salam through traffic. It's poked away. That's Comer, and he finds Lewis. Lewis to the rim. Too strong. Putback won't go. And Comer's going to get to it, and it's an extra possession for the Generals. Lewis down the baseline. Blocked, but he's fouled. Ahmad Salam came with the help side D, and the officials say he made a little too much contact, and Lewis will go to the line to shoot two. Well, Concordia and Snyder are tied at 14. They're in the second quarter. We're in the second quarter here as Lewis at the line for some crucial free throws. In the last few possessions, Wayne de Wayne's defense has been a lot better. It sounded like that was something that Anthony Brewer was challenging his guys on in the last time out. 
we got to stay with guys. Basically, that's a paraphrase of what he said. As Lewis goes two for two. It's a nine-point lead for Wayne. Northrop has battled with the Generals tonight. To his right goes Mersine Mingashunga, and he turns it over. Comer gives that one up to Lewis. Lewis to the corner. A catch and shoot three. Eldridge, the freshman, Tyree Eldridge with a wing three. Reese fires a three. That's off the mark, and Dillard gets to it. Lewis crossover. Finds Eldridge again. Lewis wanted the shot from the free throw line, and now he's going to feed that to Eldridge. Eldridge another three. This time it's an air ball. We're down to 50 seconds. Northrop could hold for the final shot of the half if they choose. There's no shot clock in IHSAA basketball. But Davis is going to go for the immediate three, and that one creeps over the backboard. 39.7 seconds to go in this first half. Sounds like Kobe Hudson has just checked into the game for Northrop. And now Wayne could hold for the final shot if they choose to do so. Tyree Eldridge has shot threes the last two possessions for the Generals. He's made one. He's a freshman. You'd think that we're going to see a lot more of him in years to come. 17 seconds to go. Lewis has it in his hands. He drew the double team. Of course, when Lewis gets double teamed, at times it'll free other guys up. And he's looking to other guys for help. We're down to four seconds, though. They got to get something off. Lewis from the volleyball line again. That comes up short, and the first half comes to an end. Wayne is leading by 12. Northrop has put together a good battle with the Bruins, with the Generals so far, but the defense from Wayne has been a lot better that last portion of the second quarter, if you will. They were playing a lot of man-to-man -man defense, and Anthony Brewer basically challenges guys, you got to stay with your opponents. you got to stay with your man when you're guarding a man-to-man -man defense. That's a, a paraphrase of what he said and the Generals last time out. Well, now that we are at halftime, we will go ahead and hear from some more of our sponsors while we have a chance to do so. Online degree programs are built for convenience and flexibility at the University of St. Francis. Most degrees can be completed in 12 months. Visit online.sf.edu for more information. Specialists in design, build, mechanical, and refrigeration. Visit tjwindustrial.com for more. Let's take some calls from the Earn your edge this season. PSM's Edge Training Program maximizes your athleticism through personalized performance training to reach your goals and get you to the next level. Visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash edge to schedule your free consultation. Well, Northrop was able to hang with Wayne for the first quarter and a good portion of the second quarter as well, but Wayne started to pull away there late in the second, and they lead this one by 12. You're watching high school basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So 
uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size, being 6'3", 6'4", to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strength. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing and science to the arts all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. The athletes has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting. And I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just, it's really, it's really cool. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. In four years, this, this could be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for our maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency.
why choose Kelly Chevrolet? We offer a wide selection of new and used inventory with a team that guides you to your perfect fit. Our certified pre-owned options ensure peace of mind with warranties and rigorous inspections. Competitive pricing, flexible financing, and convenient trade and services, making your dream Chevrolet a reality. Trust our experienced service team to keep your vehicle in top shape and enjoy free car washes as long as you own your vehicle. 35 to 23, Wayne has the lead over Northrop. Now Northrop had gotten it as close as a two point game at one point in this game, but late in the second quarter, we did see improved defense from the Generals. They did a better job in the man-to-man -man defense of staying with the men that they were guarding, and that's something that Anthony Brewer wanted them to do a better job of in a timeout that he called about midway through the second quarter, and it seems as though the kids got the message, and they lead it by 12 here at the end of two quarters. Here's the first half scoring for you. Don LeRae Reese leads the way for Northrop with nine points. Dallas Lawrence has seven. Ahmad Salam has five. Makai Davis has two. Leading scorer for Wayne is Javon Lewis with 16 points. H.J. Dillard has seven. Quaylen Miles has four. And Carrington Terry and Preston Comer each have two apiece. Tyree Eldridge has also hit a three off the bench. And with that, the Generals have a 35-23 lead over the Bruins here at halftime. Well, Southside leads Carroll 37-29 at halftime. That's another score that we've got to update you on. Concordia and Snyder are also going at it. Those guys might be at halftime as well. See if we can get you some updates on some of the other scores. Yet we do have some updates. Homestead's got a 23-18 lead over Northside and just missed the second of two free throws. That's a couple of scores we have to update you on. Also, Heritage is taking on Woodland over there in Woodburn, Indiana, and it looks like Heritage has an 18-13 lead over the Warriors. Woodland has a load of talent this year, especially when you think about guys like Trey Yoder and Braden Smith returning to the Warriors basketball team. Of course, Wayne had a lot of talent. They're looking to repeat as SAC champions this year. They're currently at first place in the SAC. They're a half game ahead of Lures. Both Wayne and Lures are undefeated in conference play. Wayne's 4-0, Lures is 3-0. Now an 18-15 lead for Heritage over Woodland. And we'll try and get you an update on that Concordia Snyder score when we get a chance to. I know Snyder in girls basketball had a huge lead over Concordia. If Snyder won that game, they would clinch at least a share of the SAC title in girls basketball. One last check was an interesting game over there at Kilmer Court. This game's been interesting at various points as Northrop is looking for their first conference win of the season. It's going to be Wayne basketball to start the third quarter. Lewis looks at the last second and gets the pass from Miles. Dillard driving inside, missed the shot. He gets his own board, count it, and a foul. H.J. Dillard doing some work on the offensive glass. He's got a chance at a three-point play. Mentioned the guys got the message at halftime, or not at halftime, but at a timeout during the second quarter as Carrington Terry has it ripped away. And quick down the floor go the Bruins. Salam, or rather, Reese turns it over. But the Generals turn it right back. Davis through traffic. He slows down. Goes back outside to Jackson Hughes. Salam has the look and hits a three. Ahmad Salam from downtown. And Northrop is able to answer. Comer trying to answer from downtown. He doesn't. Well, does that three give Northrop a bit of a spark? We'll see. Salam fakes the pass. Gives that one up to Don LeRae Reese. Reese contested, and they call a foul. That was a late call. They get Comer for the foul. They 
do call it on the shot, so Don LaRay Reese will go to the timeline. And Don LaRay is true on the first free throw. And Northrop can get this back to a single digit game. He does. 11 points for Reese, and Northrop is on a bit of a 5 0 run. Comer had to leap for that one. He's about six foot four. He's got the height that he can do something like that, but Lewis has the speed, but missed the shot. Out of bounds off Northrop, and Lewis is down. Officials there to help him up, and so too is H.J. Dillard. Good news is Lewis is back on his feet. Wayne is already without Chase Barnes for tonight, and Kalen Williams-Thomas is not available either. They're hoping to have Barnes back soon, but Williams-Thomas may be done long-term, or out long-term, I should say. Not sure if he's done for the season, but he's definitely out long-term. Salam commits a foul along the sideline. He got tangled up with Quaylen Miles. I think Brewer just said protect the ball. And his challenge to his guys before halftime was to do a better job in man-to-man -man defense. Nice challenge him to do the fundamentals right on offense. Dillard missed that shot in close. Comer with the offensive board. Miles from a tough angle. How did he do that? Little reverse by Quaylen Miles. They get it to Hughes. Cutting inside, Salam. Oh my goodness, Ahmad Salam. The circus shot in traffic. And I don't believe Northrop has had an empty possession in this third quarter. They've scored every time they've had the ball, but right back at you, Quaylen Miles knocking down the jumper. Lawrence. Contested jumper, long. Lewis, the outlet to Miles. He gets it to him. Can he finish? Yes! Quaylen Miles in transition. Well, Miles trying to push the pedal down as the general stretch the lead back out to 13. Reese answers with a floater. Quick down the floor go the generals. Dillard counted and a foul. He had a chance at a three-point play earlier, and he's got another one here with 5.20 to go in the third. And Dillard will try to complete this three-point play as Tyree Eldridge, the 6-1 freshman guard, comes into the game. Tyree's already hit a three in this game so far. Dillard's long on the free throw, out of bounds, and the cheerleaders makes the catch. They're going to call it Northrop Ball. That cheerleader was just holding on to the ball until the official made the call. That's actually a good thing to do. Now, if the official asks for the ball for you, you got to give it to him. That's a whole different story. Down the floor to Salam. Can he finish? Yes, he does. Back and forth they go as Northrop answers in transition. Ahmad Salam's got 12 points. Lewis finds Dillard. Dillard through traffic, left it short. Boy, the Bruins crowded him on that drive to the basket. Spin move, Salam. Loose ball. Wayne's got it. It's Lewis. He slips it, and Dillard has it taken away by Reese. Reese down the floor. Salam, can he finish again? Yes! Ahmad Salam in transition. Salam working on Lewis, and he fouls him. Keyshawn Tolls ready to come back into the game for the Generals, and he does check in to give Terry a break. Carrington Terry starting tonight with the injuries to both Chase Barnes and Kalen Williams-Thomas, the Concordia transfer. Homestead still leading against Northside, but that lead is now 25-23. That's over at Bahay Arena. 
Northside's battling for first in the SAC. They're two and one in conference play. Lewis fakes the three, zips it outside. Lewis, is that a three? He was fouled on the shot. He was on the line. They say it's two free throws for Lewis. With 4.14 to go. Boy, this has been a quarter full of transition basketball. Northrop goes down the floor, scores in transition. Snyder comes down the floor and answers. Excuse me, Wayne does. Snyder's playing Concordia. As Lewis is true on that first free throw. He gets both of them. 18 points for Javon Lewis. I've heard him given the nickname Baby J by some around here. As Lawrence drives through traffic, swatted away, it's Lewis. Lewis lobs it for Dillard, and he throws it wildly, and they're calling it out on Northrop. Did they call a foul on Northrop? But Dillard threw that thing out of bounds, so unless you're calling a foul, I. I think that should have been Northrop Ball. Officials are going to discuss this. We've got no indication that there's a foul. If it were a foul on the Bruins, it would mean free throws. Miles short on the three. Driving is Davis. He feeds it to Hughes. Hughes down the baseline, and he's fouled. That's going to be on Keyshawn Tolls. That's Tolles' second foul. Concordia now leads Snyder 23 to 20 over there at Kilmer Court. Salam looking for help. He fires it in. It's stolen away by Eldridge. The freshman got to keep a handle on his dribble. It's blocked, and he pokes it out to Lewis. Boy, Lewis came awful close to a double dribble there. Dillard gets open and stuffs it down. And now Shane Merriman wants a timeout. Well, while they take a timeout, we will go ahead and show you this last replay. As always, it's brought to you by Traction Athletic Performance. Well, it started with the defense. As Tyree Eldridge, the freshman, comes in off the bench. Did have a little trouble controlling his dribble and had the shot initially blocked by Davis. Not sure if Lewis did palm that thing or... Either way, H.J. Dillard comes up with the jam at the back end of it, and Dillard's up to 13 points is what nearly looked like a broken possession for the Generals turns into points as they make it a broken possession for Northrop, getting the steal by Eldridge. So Eldridge making an impact as a freshman. He's hit a three in the ball game. And the thing he did right there on that possession was after having the shot block, feed the ball out to Javon Lewis on the wing. Even though he did lose his dribble on the drive, after having a shot block, he had the presence of mind to find Lewis in the corner. So we're certainly seeing some good things from this freshman. And do we have a wet spot on the floor? The assistant coaches for Wayne just grabbed a towel. Apparently it's not on the floor. Apparently it's something in the stands. Well, not sure if that's a fan who needs tending to or what, but certainly hope that everything's all right. As Davis drives against two men, missed the shot. Miles is there. Miles going quick down the floor. Bruins get back on defense. Here's Dillard looking to go to work. It's blocked, but Dillard is fouled. Dallas Lawrence called for the foul. Snyder has retaken the lead, meanwhile, over Concordia. 26-25 in that game. They're in the third quarter. Well, that was well short. Dillard has struggled from the free throw line, and also Northside looks like they've taken the lead against Homestead. 26-25 appeared to be the score. I just pulled that one up. Oh, H.J. goes 0 for 2. Eldridge hustling, but it's taken away. Well, We'll give Eldridge an A for effort, but Makai Davis will get an A++ for effort and success. But right back at you, Eldridge with the steal, and that's taken away by Reese. And he throws it 
almost into no man's land. Salam comes up with it, still loose, and recovered by Whitset. Salam for three, got it! That ball was bobbled around, and finally Salam caps it off with a three ball. Well, Ahmad Salam is having himself a ball game. 17 points as Lewis's three comes up short. And here come the Bruins again. Salam slows it down, feeds Witset. Lawrence uses the screen. All taken away. Ripped out by Miles, one on one. Counted and a foul. Quaylen Miles turning defense into offense. And Miles will get himself a trip to the free throw line. He's starting this game in part because of the injuries, in large part because of the injuries to Chase Barnes and Kalen Williams Thomas, but Miles is making the most of his opportunity. He got it done the defensive end and the offensive end that time around. He's got 12 points for the game, and we've got 2.10 to go in this third quarter. Indeed, Northrop is leading, or rather, North Side is leading against Homestead, but another missed free throw for the Generals. Davis the board. Reese from the corner missed the three. And that's rebounded by Lewis. Make that Miles. He actually rebounded it over his own man, Zaire Sullivan. Sullivan sets the screen for him. And they get it back to Lewis. Lewis with Salam on him. Feeds it inside off the hands of Tolls, but stepping out of bounds was Mersane Mingashunga as he went for the loose ball. And Wayne keeps it after nearly turning it over. In fact, I think that officially does go as a turnover for the Generals. But it also goes as Northrop turning the ball right back to them as James Browning enters the game for the Bruins. Miles gets it back to Lewis. Sullivan on the inside. Miles going to spot up for three. He hits it. Quaylen Miles making an impact here in the third for the Generals. Salam poked away, got it back. They feed it to him on the baseline. Salam dishes, easy bucket, James Browning. Coming up on the final minute of the third quarter. Northrop's been able to stay in it. Lewis never lost his dribble there. He spins inside, swings it out to Miles. Miles got it back. Wayne could hold for the final shot of the quarter here. There's 43 seconds. Loose ball. Lewis still loose and now picked up by the Bruins. It was Minga Shinga who picked it up for Northrop. That's out of bounds to Wayne. The 32.4 to play. The Bruins fans are on this side of the gym not liking the call. Now we'll see if Wayne does hold for the final shot as Miles drives. Missed it. Sullivan's there against two defenders, and he turns it over. He's trying to get it out of traffic, and the Bruins get the takeaway. Davis down the floor. No shot. Blocking foul. Oh, no. Illegal screen. And Shane Merriman's going to get an explanation here. And they call it on Salam. We had a call similar to that in the first quarter. That was the seventh team foul on the Bruins. So this is going to be free throws for Wayne. Comes with 12.6 left to play. And it looks like Keyshawn Tolles will be the one who shoots the free throws. Homestead and Northside now tied at 32 apiece. That's in the fourth quarter, as we said earlier. Concordia is leading Snyder 29 to 27. I'll have a couple of ball games that I'm covering tomorrow. One's at Northrop. And now they're going to change the call and say 
It's still an offensive foul, but because it's an offensive foul on Northrop, no free throws. We're down to nine seconds. Lewis across the timeline. Will he be asked to take the shot? He's going to take it. He missed it, but he drew the foul with 1.5, and this time it will be free throws for the Generals. Javon Lewis has 18 points in the game. Quaylen Miles has also had an outstanding performance. We've he's got 15. Lewis will add to his total with that free throw. Lewis goes two for two. 15-point lead, that's the largest of the game. Salam got that off in time, but did not get it to go. We've played three quarters here at Wayne High School. Generals with a 15-point lead, and we're back in a matter of moments here on SummitCitySports.com for the start of the fourth. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency. Wayne's got a 56 to 41 lead, but we've had a lot of quick up-tempo basketball in this game. Wayne scores on a transition bucket, and then Northrop will come back and answer, going and transition themselves. By the way, Carroll has tied the game against Southside. It's 58 all. Got the ball right now, trying to take the lead. It will be Northrop's ball to start the fourth quarter here at Wayne, meanwhile. Ahmad Salam has turned in an outstanding performance tonight. 17 points. He's hit some big-time threes in the ballgame as Miles guards him. Salam trying to get by him. The help side comes, and we're going to get a foul on Miles. Ahmad Salam trying to add to his impressive night here at the free throw line. Salam does just that. Well, Salam has 18 points for Northrop. Javon Lewis has 20 points for Wayne. And Salam will make it 19 points. Here's Lewis guarded by Salam. Lewis on the drive draws the foul. And they're going to call it on the shot, so Javon will go to the free throw line. They call it on Ahmad Salam, and that's his fifth, so he is fouled out of the game. 19 points, an outstanding performance for Salam, but unfortunately his night is done. And it ends with 7.37 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Lewis able to knock it down. Lewis's free throw shooting is one reason why Wayne has been able to hold on to the lead here in the second half. He goes two for two there. Now Northrop's been successful in transition offense, but Ahmad Salam was a big reason for that. With him not being on the floor, 
how does it affect the Bruins the rest of this game? Screen set. And the shot by Reese won't fall, but it's recovered by Davis. Davis to his left, through the paint, knocked away. Taken right back. Hughes tries to slip it through, and Lewis comes up with it. Slips it to Terry. Terry missed the dunk. And all Davis had to do was wait for it. Davis brings it back out with Lewis on him. All poked away. Lewis gets to it. Can he finish? Yes, and a foul. Javon Lewis creates the steal and creates two points for Wayne. And Lewis up to 24 points for the night. Well, in the girls game, we had Khalees Collins came up with 21 points for Wayne. And we also had Kayla Williams-Thomas, who scored 38 for Northrop. We've had some high-scoring athletes in this doubleheader here at Wayne High School. And Lewis does indeed complete the three-point play. Give him 25 points for the night. Let's not forget Quaylen Miles. He's got 15. He came up with some big shots in the third quarter to help Wayne slow down any kind of comeback effort that Northrop was trying to make. They've been trying to make a comeback effort since the first quarter as Lawrence drives and scores. Lewis feeds that one over to Dillard. Dillard using the penetration. They're going to call him for the foul. Offensive foul on Dillard as Reese got in the way. Dillard did pull his arm up to protect the ball. Reese holding the back of his head. I certainly hope he's okay. Certainly hope this isn't anything serious. The trainer might be coming out to look at him. Lindsey Faust is the athletic trainer for Northrop, and she's going to pull him off the court. As Don LeRae Reese came off holding his head and kind of tilting it forward. Certainly hope he's not dealing with anything serious. Certainly hope he's not dealing with a concussion of any kind. But whatever the case may be, I think Don LeRae wants to get back out there. They'll give that up to Minga Shinga. That's poked away. Keyshawn Tolls, he lost it. The lob poked in the air by Lewis. Can Miles save it? He does, but into the hands of Davis. And Davis scores and won. The ball has been poked up in the air several times like a volleyball. And Makai Davis made it count that time. And usually when you see that many loose balls, Northrop has been winning those. Davis missed the free throw, and I think everybody forgot that that was a live ball. That was only one free throw after a make. Miles swings it out to Dillard. He'll let it fly, but that's an air ball. Mingashinga down the baseline, finds Whitset. Hughes going to bring it back outside. Whistles blow, and it's traveling called on Makai Davis. Definitely shuffled. Definitely took a couple of steps on his way to the paint. And we've got 5.28 to go here at Wayne High School. The Generals with the lead. Northrop has been playing fast and stingy basketball. Lewis the drive to the basket. Dishes to Eldridge. Short on the three. And the board is grabbed by Minga Shinga. He feeds it inside. Lawrence with the fake, and he scores. Dallas Lawrence using the shot fake to get the deuce. Lawrence is up to 11 points as the Bruins trying to pick up the slack with Ahmad Salam having fouled out of the game. Spin move, Miles. He finds Tolls, and he's hacked. Tolls looks like he's headed to the free throw line here. Line, 
Keyshawn Tolles at the free throw line with 4.46 to go, and he's able to connect on that one. Have dual games tomorrow, as I'll be at Northrop as they take on Central Noble. That'll be boys basketball, and then I'll have girls basketball at Snyder in the evening as they take on Northridge. Keyshawn Tolles on the board for the first time with those free throws. Wayne trying to keep themselves at first place in the SAC. They get a turnover here. It's Eldridge, leaves it to Tolles, and Tolles able to put it in. Again, the Generals turn defense into offense. They've done a good job of that throughout this ball game. Tyree Eldridge coming up with a steal that time, and Tolles with the finish. Hughes got to protect the ball. He does. He swings it, tipped in the air by Dillard. Dillard finds Miles. Miles takes it all the way and scores. Quaylen Miles in transition. Seventeen point night for Miles as Don Larray Reese comes down the floor. Hughes. They're working around a wit set. Hughes feeds it over. Ball is loose. Miles going for it. He's got it. And then he gets fouled. That's going to be on Don Larray Reese. And that's going to be Don LeRae's second foul of the game. That foul will mean that Wayne is in the double bonus on the next Northrop foul. Lewis through the paint, recovers his dribble and finds Dillard. Dillard at the rim, no. Batted in the air, Dillard gets it back and puts it home. Dillard doing some work on the offensive glass. I've got him for 15 points on the night. That was bobbled initially. Oh, that looked like a travel, but Hayden Lepley gets the pass off to Mingashinga. Three ball, Mingashinga won't go, and that's Dillard with the board. He slips it through a tight window to Miles. Rather to Lewis. Lewis with a contested three, comes up short. Offensive board, Eldridge, the freshman, puts it home. We've seen some good stuff from Eldridge on the defensive end today and on the offensive end. And a couple of steals and also five points, including a three ball toward the end of the first half. Miles comes out of the pack with it. Out to Eldridge. He'll try another three. That one's short. Miles has got it. And it crawls in. Quaylen Miles having that kind of night. Give him 19 points for the game. Driving in is Michael McCowan. They work that outside to Hudson. Kobe Hudson on the drive. Recovered by Mingashinga. Lepley's three won't fall, and Lewis has got it. Lewis, one on two, lost the ball. They're going to call it out of bounds to Northrop. We've got a minute 49 to go in this one. Meanwhile, Concordia's got a five-point lead over Snyder in the fourth quarter. 38-33 is the score over there, but looks like that lead has been cut into. It has. Snyder just made it 38-35. That game's coming down to the wire over there at Kilmer. This one looks to be well decided. Looked early on like we might be coming down to the wire, but Wayne has pushed the pedal down here in the fourth quarter. Kobe Hudson with it into the paint, and he's able to score. Kobe Hudson, the senior, gets on the board before the night's over. Toll spins in. Off the glass it goes. Mingashinga loses it, and he's fouled. One ten left to go. 
in regulation. That was not a shooting foul, apparently. It's a fourth team foul on Wayne, and it will be Northrop Ball on the baseline. Inbound to McCowan. McCowan up with it, no good. Dillard was guarding him, and he gets the board. Oh, they squeeze it into Eldridge in transition. And we're inside the final minute of play. Hudson brings it back out. Minga Shinga, a little crossover dribble there against Trayvon Ziegler. Lepley for three, got it. Hayden Lepley from downtown. He gets on the board before the night's over. They just get it over to Eldridge as he crosses the timeline, and Wayne is not going to have to take another shot. Well, give credit to Northrop. They battled in this game. They were quick down the floor. They didn't quit even when they fell behind by double digits. They had a lot of really good defensive possessions in this game, but it's going to be Wayne who comes out with the win. They certainly responded well initially when Anthony Brewer challenged him to play better defense in the second quarter. And even though they gave up a lot of those transition opportunities to Northrop in the second half, they created a lot of transition opportunities of their own and cashed in on them. And Wayne, in the end, wins this one 77-54 over Northrop. The architectural twins go at it. And in this case, it's Wayne who gets the victory. And by the way, they get the victory on Hall of Fame night. The 2024 Hall of Fame class was announced and recognized between the girls' game and the boys' game. And in the boys' game, it's Wayne who wins it 77-54. Well, our Parkview Sports Medicine players of the game are going to be Javon Lewis and Quaylen Miles. Lewis finishes with 25 points, Miles with 19. Miles was instrumental in the general's effort to pull away in the third quarter. He scores 19 points total in the game, and Lewis with 25 points. They are your Parkview Sports Medicine players of the game. And that's going to do it from here at Wayne High School. The Generals win 77-54 over the Bruins. For my cameraman, Matt Jackson, this is Thad Goff saying so long from Wayne High School. 77-54, Wayne wins over Northrop. You've been watching high school basketball on SummitCitySports.com. I came into PSM my freshman year after volleyball. Just coming here just really improved like mentally and physically. I brought in my strengths. I came in and I learned how to grow as an athlete. I mean, I've gotten stronger and sprint faster, get up higher. My jump has elevated. Working with Tyler, he built up my endurance for everything, whether it's in weights, sprints. All across the board, we just keep working. And I have athlete development at Warsaw High School that I go to. And so I send him my thing every day. And he changes what we do in here to adapt to what we do there. High school volleyball, when you can go up to five sets, being able to out, like, just outwork everybody and still being able to put in that 100% was huge for me. PSM performance definitely helped me mentally. I know I can beat out people. I know I can like work for what I have. And I know I can like even go to the next level on the court. Looking at college, I can put on it. I'm like, I'm training at a college level. I mean, I come in here and I watch college athletes train. You have hockey players, soccer, and you look around and you see every type you can. And just being able to see that level, and I know that I can reach that level as well. You gotta work to be the best. I knew that from a young age, I wanted to put in the work. The athletes has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool.